This looks good. This is a Quant. Correct. It's a solar electric car. Yes, interestingly enough, and uh, comes from uh, Königsegg. We developed in Sweden for a Swiss company called NLV, okay. who specializes in new technology accumulators, let's say batteries, and uh, vapor de deposition solar cells that can be integrated into the body's paintwork. Okay, check this out. It's, it's phenomenal looking. Um, we've got a very beautiful kind of Koenigsegg front, similar to that. Yeah, we try to kind of capture uh, the Koenigsegg feeling and aerodynamic and look into a full-bodied four-seater for four fully grown persons. So it's a huge gullwing door going up, so you go straight into the rear seat. Still you have two separate side windows, so when the door is closed it really feels like four doors even though it's just one. Yeah. Since there is no B-pillar, the entry to the rear seat is very easy because you can swing your feet freely in and there is no door in the way anywhere because it's up in the air. Yeah. The car has got a CD of 0 0.27 which is very important for an electric car because drag and range is very closely interrelated. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time making it really slippery. So you can see the cockpit area is quite narrow compared to the car and it's really a nice airstream going around to keep the drag low. It's stunning. Still, the interior space is about uh, the size of a Mercedes S-Class. So, it's, I think it's one of the first cars that really looks almost like a supercar, but has the space as a traditional large luxury sedan. For example, the rear boot, you can fit uh, children trolleys and golf bags and stuff like that. So, it's really a usable car. Wow. Tell me about the solar element. Where does the solar element come in? Well, it's really an interesting technology. It's called chemical vapor deposition. It's, uh, the panels are put into a kind of a vacuum chamber and uh, the solar cell is deposited in layers in, inside, underneath the clear coat of the car. So you don't really see anything and it's very efficient technology developed by NLV. Uh, and it enables us to have it more or less all over the car, not only in certain areas. And yeah, it's just a great new invention, I would say. So, so where are the cells? Well, they are inside, here, here, everywhere on the painted surface on the top. Of course, we don't need them down here that much, so it's on top of the car, the painted areas. Are they like a PV cell then? Um, yeah, it's a photovoltaic cell. Okay. Yeah, it is. But, but it's, it's applied through chemical vapor deposition. It's a so-called thin film solar cell. Can it supply much power to the car? Or is well, it, is of it, course, you know? it, it's a backup system. It's not okay. what makes the car run. But if you park it in a, in a week in a southern Europe, it might even recharge the car fully. So. Yeah. yeah, I guess. And they say 90% of the time the car's not moving anyway. Yeah, so it, it's really nice. And it extends the range, it keeps the AC going, yeah. not off of the battery and stuff like that. Tell us about the performance on this, this beast. Well, it's, uh, it's a dual AC uh, engines at the rear. Total 512 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque. At 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.2 seconds, 270 kilometer per hour top speed. So it's a really sporty four-seater. Wow. Uh, it goes the way it looks, basically. When can we get it? Well, we are building now prototype cars of it, and uh, I would say no, no sooner than three years to market, which should be really fast. The cells are lithium ion in there? No. What are they? they it's an accumulator based on a, a, a proprietary technology mixed with redox flow cell technology. So it's not a lot of cells, it's a very limited amount of cells and it's kind of a fluids and pumps and it's, it's quite a different technology. But it enables a, a, a very big storage of energy in a quite small area. So you call them a fuel cell rather than a battery? Or no, it's not a fuel cell, it's an accumulator. Okay, wow. And where will they be positioned in the vehicle? Well, we have a central um, kind of backbone carbon fiber tube. So it's a huge tube in the center. So you have a quite high armrest at the rear and the seats are quite spread wide apart. And that's the carbon tube backbone. And into that we slide in the accumulators. So we get the weight distribution and mass center perfect and it's a very safe position for the, uh, for the, for the cells and the accumulators and uh, it makes the car very stiff and it's the most cost-efficient way to making a carbon fiber chassis. When, when, when can we have it? As I said, no earlier than three years, but we're working on the prototypes. I mean, it's, uh, that's, your, that's your dream car. I, I presume that it's not going to be that reasonable because it is a, 
a high It depends on seat. volume. It okay. depends on volume. And that's why we have made this full-scale mock-up to gauge people's reaction to the way the car looks, get input if there's anything that we should change, and also to get an idea of what, what potential volume can we have at different price range. So that's yeah. all up in the air, basically. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I'll, I want to keep asking you when can we have it, just because it is, it's stunning, <laughs> and, and the technology sounds so advanced. The idea that you can have solar cells within the skin of the car, basically. That's it. I've and only ever seen cars with PV cells on the roof. Right. Or, you know? That's, but that's the here, present it's, technology. It's kind of living, breathing thing. Exactly. Wow. And, and, I mean, the whole car lives or falls with the accumulator technology. When it works as good as we want, that it makes the car. If it wouldn't, it breaks the car. Because yeah, people yeah. don't want to stop after one hour of driving or something like that. So that's the key to the whole thing. Christian, thank you. That's really great.